Kathy Tata have said this evening that a final decision on where in the UK they'll build this giant gigafactory has yet to be made. But this former ordnance factory site in Somerset appears to be the current front runner. And if that's the case, then for this part of the southwest of England, it could be transformative given the thousands of new jobs involved. As for the British car industry, some are hailing this as the single most important investment decision since Nissan arrived in the 1980s. That's how critical the homegrown manufacturing of electric batteries is now deemed to the survival of indigenous car industries. The question is, how much did the government have to stump up in taxpayers' money to persuade Tata to come to the UK and not Spain, which is apparently also under consideration. Downing Street today wouldn't get involved in discussions about speculation that it could have involved half a billion, even a billion, perhaps, in public subsidies to Tata. But they did say that, you know, those figures would eventually come out in the normal way. But it has raised questions about how much public money has been used to secure this deal, and also whether there's anything left in the pot to attract other new battery gigafactories, which we're told are still needed for the UK to be competitive. Against a backdrop of a Jaguar Land Rover office today and improving news on inflation, this was a moment Everyone pumped up? Yeah. the UK car industry had been waiting some time to see. A model of a vast new planned electric car battery gigafactory to be built in Britain, it was announced, by Jaguar Land Rover's owners, the Indian conglomerate Tata. This is a fantastic vote of confidence in the UK and the UK economy. It's one of the largest ever investments in the UK auto sector that we've seen. It's getting us ready for the future and the transition to electric vehicles. It's billions of pounds of investment and thousands of jobs, so it's great news. As the world rushes to build electric vehicles, the batteries which power them now typically account for more than half of the value of the vehicle. A homegrown battery supply line is seen as fundamental to any nation aspiring to retain a car industry, which is why Tata's decision to invest £4 billion in a battery gigafactory in Britain matters economically. I mean, it is in many respects a watershed moment. It's something that's We've been really necessary. It's something that we've been waiting for for quite some time. It's been a bit late in arriving, but now that the, the decision is made, clearly it's going to be an extremely important moment, not just for Jaguar Land Rover, but for the wider in industry. And not before time, many would argue. Tata's vast battery production line, it's thought, could be built on this former ordnance factory site in Somerset. Production is due to start in 2026, but currently there's only one such similar, much smaller factory operating in Britain, making batteries for Nissan in Sunderland. Another is under construction there. The startup British Vault went into administration earlier this year. And yet predicted demand for electric batteries produced in the UK is increasing rapidly. By 2030, when the ban on the sale of new diesel and petrol cars comes in, it'll be an estimated 100 gigawatt hours needed. But the new gigafactory in Somerset, alongside an existing one in Sunderland, are only likely to be able to meet around two-thirds of that demand. Earlier this year, one industry voice described the UK as a bystander in the global battery arms race, outflanked by Europe and the US. So arguably the government needed this deal badly. But at what cost has it come to the taxpayer? <laughs> The Prime Minister wouldn't be drawn on the amount of public funds used to persuade Tata to choose Britain for this factory, but it's thought to involve hundreds of millions of pounds in subsidies. In the southwest of England, if Tata's gigafactory does end up here, the construction of a new nuclear power station at Hinkley Point is already reshaping the local economy. Set that to 30 hertz for me. At nearby Bridgewater and Taunton College, apprentices for that industry train in a simulated power station. Already here, they're anticipating a whole new cohort of students to be immersed one day in the world of making electric car batteries. Our best estimates, it will be hundreds, uh, because you know we've got to develop a brand new workforce. There aren't 
people sat at home today with these skills. So we've got to really develop it. And when we started with Hinkley, we, we thought, oh, there'll be a few apprentices. It's now in the hundreds of apprentices. And I think this will be the same effect. Wherever Tata chooses ultimately to build its new gigafactory, it will, they say, be one of the largest in Europe. 4,000 new jobs are promised, thousands more in the wider supply chain. A big moment then for the British car industry. But how many more will be needed to catch up where others still lead?